Look at chapter 10. Uh, this is phenomenal. This is, this is what empowers us as we go out and share the gospel with people. Salvation is knowing the peace that my sins are gone. In Acts 10, 36, uh, the word was sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. Verse 39, they hung him on a tree at the end of it. Uh, in verse 43, to him all the prophets witness that through his name, the one hung on the tree, the one who is Lord of all, of verse 36, the one who brings peace through his name, whoever believes in him. That's like the hymn writer said, only trust him. Only trust him. He will save you. He will save you. Only trust him now. That one, through his name, whoever believes in him receives remission of sins. They know the peace that their sins are gone. Do you know the peace your sins are gone this morning? That's salvation. And Jesus himself, did you know the, the book of Revelation repeatedly says that Jesus right now is walking around this church because this is one of his lampstands where we're proclaiming his word and he is the Lord of this church and he is right here. And he, is, he knows everyone are connection or not connected. And he's right here ready to connect. That's, that's the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. And what happens when that happens? Chapter 11. We went on to see that salvation is turning the Lord in repentance. God gave, it says in verse 17, to them the same gifts as he gave us when we believed. And then it says in, in the end of verse 18, then God has granted to the Gentiles repentance to life. Those who have life have been granted repentance. And everybody who is saved has turned to the Lord in repentance. And that's the gospel. And you know what? There's a new pop version of the gospel that is not true that says that you can make that decision and pray that when you're like two years old, but you can live like the devil, become a Muslim, and you can become a Mormon, you can become a Jehovah's Witnesses, Witness, and you can end up as a practicing homosexual because you did something when you were, did something that God has to save you. He does save all that he saves, but his salvation contains this. God granted repentance to life. You can't come to life in Christ without repentance. See, you have to turn away from religion to Christ. Or you could put it, you have to turn to Christ away from religion. Whichever way you want to say it, there's the turn. And if you keep reading, it says at the end in verse 21 of chapter 11, it says, And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned. They believed the message. And God supernaturally turned them to himself. You see, this is something I can't do and you can't do. Only God can do. Make sure he's done it. Because salvation is turning the Lord in repentance. And it goes on in chapter 13 that when he turns us in repentance, look what verse 38 says, Therefore let it be known to you, brethren, that through this man is preached to you forgiveness of sins. That's the one thing every one of us here that are going to heaven know is we're forgiven. And not just forgiveness, it's having both the penalty and the record of all my sins forever gone, which equals forgiveness of everything. It isn't like I'm scared, one's going to slip in, it's going to be one too many, one too bad, one too whatever. No. Everyone that God saves, think about this. In his wisdom, which is also known as his omniscience, at the instant of our salvation, God, who equally vividly sees all things past, present, and future, at the instant of our salvation, he already knows our entire life and all of its iniquities and transgressions and sins. And at the instant of our salvation, he credits to us the justifying work of Christ that has both the penalty and record of all my sins forever gone. And boy, is that a witnessing tool. Uh, I, I told the story, in fact, I told a lot of stories. It's hard to, to go through that whole series I went through this week without telling you. I told a story of, of the power walker that burst into my office many years ago, pushed my secretary, right? I mean, he would take no, would not take no for an answer, and he pushed her right through opening the door with her pushing back on him and burst into my office. And he says, I want to know what people in this church have because I don't have it. And I mean, I've never had anybody ask me to lead them to the Lord in that manner before. 
And as I shared the gospel with him, I actually stood up from my desk. I was sitting there in the middle of my study studying, and I stood up with my Bible, and I said, so you want me to share the gospel? I will. And I started through the Romans road, and I got about the third point, you know, that, that you have to call in the name of the Lord. And I looked up, and he was gone. And I thought, oh. you know, here I went, interrupted everything, and, and I looked down, and there he was, down on his face, with, down on the carpet with his face flat down, weeping. And I thought, wow, it works. We all know that, but it's fun to see it now and then. I mean, this is the most pagan man, and when he heard what Jesus offered, then he knew, look what it says in verse 38. Verse 39, I mean, everyone who believes is justified from all things. And he believed, and the Lord transformed him. And boy, did he give a great testimony. He stood next to me. He was a special forces, one of the most worked out, muscular people I'd ever seen. And he just read Titus 2, 3 to 5 for his baptismal testimony. It says, For you were also once disobedient and hard and malicious and hating and, and, and just, and he went through that whole list and he said, But then the kindness of God. And he said, That's what happened to me. And it wasn't by works of righteousness, because he said, I've never been righteous. But by his mercy, he saved me. By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, and he turned and folded his hands and waited for me to dunk him. It was so precious. Do you know that both the penalty and record of all your sins